Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading Esperanza chapter 12. Um, but first we're going to complete our fill in the blank summary. So get ready to fill in the blanks. Esperanza works in the... She's not really in the field right now. Right now she's in the... Um, she's in the warehouse. So Esperanza works in the warehouse because her mother is sick and living in the hospital. Remember, at any point you can press pause so you can write down the answers and then play for the next part. Esperanza is also saving up money so that she can bring Abuelita to the United States. Esperanza finds out that her mother has gotten better. Esperanza goes with Miguel into town to the market. Oh, I think this is actually worse. Her mother has gotten worse. Sorry. And then Esperanza goes with Miguel into town to the market. Esperanza decided to buy a money order to pay for Abuelita and a piñata for Mama. On the way back, they pick up Marta and her mother. Esperanza is shocked at their poor living conditions. Marta warns Esperanza that there will be a strike during asparagus season. Later that week, Miguel announces that he got a job on the railroad. Um, Marta was... Alone? I don't know. I'm not really sure what goes in that way. Let's erase it. Oh, Marta was right. There it is. Marta was right. There was a strike at the beginning of the asparagus season. Esperanza continued to work. The strikers put razor blades and snakes in the asparagus. The workers are scared of what they will do next. All right, finish. You can go back and rewind if you didn't catch some of the answers. Today, our focus question is how does Esperanza respond to Marta in Chapter 12? Is this what we would expect from her? Why or why not? Before we start reading, we have three vocabulary words. The first one is caravan, um, and that's a group of people. It was traditionally like a group of people traveling across the desert, in present day, it could be like um, a group of people traveling in cars right behind another. Um, it can also be um, an attachment onto your car, like a mobile home. The next one is riveting. That's something that's like really interesting and grabs your attention. And then deportation, the removal from a country. So it's when someone is sent back to the country they came from. They're deported. All right, we're in the second section of Chapter 12, and we're going to use our CSPS strategy. Um, you can ignore what I have highlighted for now, um, and I'll be highlighting CSPS in blue. Esperanza had grown accustomed to the strikers chanting while she packed asparagus that the moment it stopped, she looked up from her work as if something was wrong. Hortensia, do you hear that? What? The silence. There's no more yelling. The other women on the line looked at each other. They couldn't see the street from where they stood, so they moved to the other end of the shed, cautiously looking out to where the strikers usually stood. In the distance, a caravan of gray buses and police cars headed fast toward the shed dust flying in their wakes. Immigration, said Josefina, it's a sweep. The picket sides lay on the ground, discarded, and like a mass of marbles that had already been hit, the strikers scattered into the fields and toward the boxcars on the track, anywhere they could hide. The buses and cars screeched to a stop, and immigration officials and police carrying clubs jumped out and ran after them. The women in the packing shed huddled together, protected by the company's guards. 
All right, so we'll stop right there. We're talking about describe the characters. Um, and what's happened? We know that immigration officers have come to um, t uh, take the strikers into custody. Immigration officers have come to take the strikers into custody. But Esperanza and the other um, workers in the shed are protected from immigration. Press pause to write down your answer in box one, and you can use um, this quote right here. And when we're thinking about the setting, we know that Esperanza, Josefina, and Hortensia um, are in the packing shed. And you can use um, that same quote to let you know they're in the packing shed. All right, let's keep reading to find out the problem. What about us, said Esperanza, her eyes riveted on the guards who caught the strikers and shoved them back toward the buses. They would surely come into the shed next with so many Mexicans working here. Her fingers desperately clenched Hortensia's arm. I cannot leave Mama. Hortensia heard the panic in her voice. No, no, Esperanza, they are not here for us. The growers need the workers. That's why the company guards us. Several immigration officials, accompanied by police, began searching the flat platform, turning over boxes, dumping out fuel bins. Hortensia was right. They ignored the workers in their stained aprons, their hands still holding the green asparagus. Finding no strikers on the dock, they jumped back down and hurried to where the crowd had, was being loaded into the buses. Americana! Americana! yelled one woman as she began to unfold some papers. One of the officials took the papers from her hand and tore it into pieces. Get on the bus, he ordered. What will they do with them? asked Esperanza. They will take them to Los Angeles and put them on a train to El Paso, Texas, and then to Mexico, said Josefina. But some of them are citizens, said Esperanza. It doesn't matter. They are causing problems for the government. They are taking, talking about forming a farm workers' union, and the government and the growers don't like that. What about their families? How will they know? Word gets out. It's sad. They leave the buses parked at the station until late at night with those they captured on board. Families don't want to be separated from their loved ones and usually go with them. That's the idea. They call it voluntary deportation, but it's not much of a choice. Two immigration officials position themselves in front of the shed. The others left on the buses. Esperanza and the other women watch the despondent faces in the windows disappear. Slowly, the women re reassembled on the line and began to pack again. It had all it had all lasted only a few minutes. What happens now? asked Esperanza. La Migra will keep their eyes open for any strikers that might be back, said Josefina, nodding toward the two men stationed nearby. And we go back to work and feel thankful that it is not us on the bus. Esperanza took a deep breath and went back to her spot. She was relieved but still imagined the anguish of the strikers. Troubled thoughts stayed in her mind. Something seemed very wrong about sending people away from their own free country because they had spoken their minds. She noticed she needed more bands to wrap around the asparagus bundles and walked to the back of the dock to get them. Within a maze of tall crates, she searched for the thick rubber bands. Some of the boxes had been tossed over by the immigration officials, and as she bit down, to set one straight, she sucked in her breath, startled by what was in front of her. Marta was huddled in the corner, holding her finger to her lips, her eyes begging for help. She whispered, Please, Esperanza, don't tell. I can't get caught. I must take care of my mother. Esperanza stood frozen for a moment, remembering Marta's meanness that first day in the truck. If she helped her and someone found out, Esperanza would be on the next bus herself. So we'll stop right there. Esperanza has 
encountered a conflict. Okay, so get ready to write down in box three. We know that um, Esperanza has discovered Marta hiding on the platform. And she must decide if she's going to turn Marta in or help Marta escape. Press pause to write down your answer for number three. And you can use this quote in box three as well. Let's keep reading to figure out what Esperanza does. She couldn't risk it and started to say no, but then she thought about Marta and her mother holding hands and couldn't imagine them being separated from each other. And besides, they were both citizens. They had every right to be here. She turned around and headed back to where the others were working. No one paid any attention to her. They were all busy talking about the sweep. She picked up a bundle of asparagus several burlap sacks from a stack and a dirty apron that someone had left on a hook. She quietly wandered back to Marta's hiding place. La Migra is still up front, she said in a hushed voice. They will probably leave in an hour when the shed closes. She handed the apron and the asparagus to Marta. When you leave, put on the apron and carry the asparagus so you'll look like a worker, just in case anyone stops you. Gracias, said Marta. I'm sorry I misjudged you, shh, said Esperanza, repositioning the crates and draping the burlap sacks across the top so Marta couldn't be seen. Esperanza, said Josefina, where are you? We need the rubber bands. Esperanza stuck her head around the corner and saw Josefina with her hands on her hips waiting. Coming, she said. She grabbed the bundle of bands and went back to work as if nothing had happened. All right, so Esperanza... Um, decides to help Marta because Marta's a citizen and she knows what it's like to be separated from your mother. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And you can use um, this quote up here about how she hands her the apron and tells her um, how to escape. Press pause to write down your answer or the quote in box four and then get ready for the paragraph. How does Esperanza respond to challenge? What do her feelings, actions, sayings, and thoughts reveal about her as a person? 